Last week, I had one of the best golf lessons I've ever had. And it was all to do with stopping my fade from turning into a massive slice. And it was the simplest little drill I've ever come across. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain exactly how it works. Let's get into it. Now, before we get into the drill, let's have a quick chat about how shot shape is created. Okay, so if you want a straight ball flight, your club face has to be square with your club path. When the club face isn't square with the path, you add curvature. This would be a fade or a slice because my club face is open to my path. This would be a draw or a hook because my club face is closed to my path. Slices generally have a club face which is open to their path and their path is usually from the outside to the inside. This is for a right-handed golfer. So even though my club face is square to the target here, because it's open to my path, I'll end up putting a left to right spin on the ball and the ball will turn from left to right. If I was coming from the inside with a square club face, I'd have a right to left shot shape, a draw or a hook. The bigger the difference in club face and club path, the bigger the curvature. So if I had a really open club face and a really out to win path, I'd end up with a really big slice. Now my problem has been that I've been closing my club face a little bit too much. And it means that the ball was starting further and further left. Now to compensate for that, my body was trying to swing from the outside to get my golf ball to curve back onto target. So really this whole problem started because my club face was too close and I was starting the ball too far left. Naturally, I wanna be hitting the target. So my body compensated by doing an out to in swing, simple. And that is the origin of a slice. You're starting the ball too far left and your body's overcompensating. Now this drill helped me in two different ways. It helped me start the ball closer to my target line and it helped me reduce my slice. Now I love playing with a fade, so I'm not trying to get rid of the fade. I'm trying to stop it from turning into a slice, which is something I always do. So this drill is giving me control, which is exactly what I need. So here I am working through this drill. So I'm getting to the top of my swing like I normally would. I'm not trying to slow it down. I'm not trying to speed it up or anything. I'm trying to make sure that I get to the top of the swing just like I always do. And then when I get to the top, I'm doing this little pump action with my hands to try and get them in the right position before I rotate my shoulders. So an over the top swing happens when you move your shoulders before you get your hands in the right position. And this drill is stopping me from doing that. So I'm just doing two or three little pumps with my hands, get them in, get them in the correct position before I rotate my shoulders. I'm only doing sort of three quarter swings, if that, maybe even half swings. Nice and slow, just to sort of feel the timing of it all. It doesn't go right every time, obviously. You're gonna hit the odd shank, you're gonna top it, you're gonna fat it, it happens. But the more you work on it, the more that it ingrains into your subconscious and ingrains into your muscle memory. So I've been doing the drill for probably about 10, 15 minutes, and now I'm starting to hit some full shots. And you can see the results. What I'm aiming to do is start the ball about two degrees left. So this HLA number at the top left, I want that to be about minus two. And the goal for the spin axis is to be less than 10. And that would be a perfect little fade for me. Anything more than 10 and I feel like it's starting to turn into a slice. And anything that starts too far left just ends up being a bit of a pull and I miss my target left. So nice, perfect fades, well struck. And because I'm hitting the ball squarer, I'm able to put less effort in to get the distance that I want. Perfect. So simple. The most beautiful thing about this drill is that it's not an exaggerated feeling to fix a particular problem. I haven't gone into the lesson with a big slice trying to draw the ball. I haven't walked away with a drill that gets me so inside 
that eventually I start hooking the ball. The drill is designed to put your hands in the correct place for any given shot shape, which means it's transferable when I have a problem with something else. So if I do end up developing a draw or a hook and I want to go back to my fade, it's just a case of remembering where my hands needed to be to achieve that shot shape and just work on it. The other good thing about this drill is that you don't need to do it with a golf ball, which means you can do it on the course. So if you need to hit a fade for a certain shot or you need to hit a draw for a certain shot, you can work on that feel on the tee box or while waiting for your playing partner to hit their shot. Now I want to thank James, the head pro at Spalding Golf Club. He's the one that gave me this lesson. He's the one that gave me this drill. I've been having lessons with him for about two years now and my game has improved so much in that time. I swear, I've, I must have dropped eight shots since I met the guy. So yeah, thank you James and thank you for this drill. This drill is gonna be a lifesaver and I hope that this ends up helping a lot of you guys watching this video. But for now, that's the end of today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. And let me know if there are any drills that you think I should be doing. You've seen my swing quite a bit now. There might be a couple of little nuggets in there that you think I need to be working on. Get in the comments, let me know. And see you in the next video. Thanks again.